What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Critical Overlord here. So we're going to be talking about Scream 7 in this video here today. Going over Jenna Ortega, Terry Carpenter, and their involvement with Scream 7 and what their next battle with Ghostface could look like potentially in my head going off of this new bit of information I'm going to disclose that may end up occurring for Scream 7 given how busy Jenna Ortega has become since Wednesday and just since she's become this big star overnight, she has Beetlejuice 2 that I think she might have already finished her scenes for because I think Beetlejuice 2 still has a few scenes it has to shoot once the strikes are over. But she's very much so in high demand right now. And if you recall, there was this tweet put out by My Time to Shine Hello back in August where they said it's unlikely that Jenna Ortega will return for Scream 7. They want to start filming as soon as possible after the strikes are over. But, but Ortega is a star now thanks to Wednesday and is super busy. Scream is just not a priority for her. And then Big Screen Leaks chimed in saying, uh, you might want to get your sources or might want to check your sources on this one. Now, the reason I'm bringing that up is because when Big Screen Leaks actually left that reply, it did make me a little bit more confident in something I had heard a few days prior to this tweet being sent out by My Time to Shine. And what had happened was one of the other sources that I have that are very trustworthy so far and have been completely correct about a lot of the stuff they've told me about not only Screen, but several other upcoming projects. They were telling me that Jenna Ortega is going to return. She just may have a limited role. So if she has a limited role, that makes sense. And apparently that's the plan as of now for her to still have a limited role. So she won't have the same presence that she has in Scream 5 or Scream 6 even, I would say. I would expect. But that doesn't necessarily mean that the limitations would reduce the significance because what they could end up doing is having Tara Carpenter kidnapped. Now you would say, okay, well, what good does that do? Well, if you have Tara Carpenter kidnapped over killing her, because you could of course always kill Tara Carpenter to really raise and set the stakes so that this is not some cheap cash in run of the mill sequel to quote Amber. You could kidnap her or kill her at the start of the film. Kidnapping her would obviously create some type of urgency within characters like Chad as well as Sam. Chad being the love interest, Sam being the sibling. Both of them could have some type of development and bonding over the film as it's progressing as they are determined to track down Ghostface and locate where Tara is. And with Jenna's limited schedule and knowing how movies shoot out of order, you can have the opening shot where she is kidnapped you can film the finale where she is saved or whatever and then jenna can leave if she needs to now granted i will also add this i of course don't know what upcoming projects jenna has to work on once these strikes are over i think currently she's working on some project for a24 that still got to shoot during these strikes but i don't know what the status is on that even what i'm getting at is even if she has a freed up schedule, by the time they actually start shooting Scream 7, it would appear what they've done is committed to that limited role for her because of the uncertainty of her availability. So they came up with something that would allow them to be able to utilize her effectively, I would hope, and then she can just go off and do other projects if necessary. And even if she doesn't have other projects to do, this was just them playing it safe. So Tara Carpenter, as of now, the plan is for her to have a limited role in Scream 7. I would do it in a way where she's kidnapped and then the movie just plays out from there. You can have her kidnapped in the opening sequence. You can have her kidnapped sometime after the opening sequence. And then we just don't see her again until the finale. This way you have a character like Sidney Prescott coming into the mix to fill in that missing duo that you had with Sam and Tara in Scream 6. Instead of Sam and Tara, you get Sam and Sydney and gives obviously Sydney a lot of stuff to do. Make her character important. Give her something worthwhile. Don't just have her in as a Tara stand in. But I think kidnapping Tara or killing her at the start would be very significant to the character because you would then are giving ammo to the other characters that are important to Tara. People who care about Tara, a.k.a. Sam and Chad, obviously Mindy and whoever else that, that is present or even Christina if she's involved. So I don't want to see a limited role for Tara where she's kind of just here and not really relevant to the story. You can create a limited role that's significant by kidnapping her, killing her, obviously doing something else. I'm just thinking off the top of my head, the two prominent things that I would do would be kill her or kidnap her. Personally, I would kill Tara in the opening sequence or sometime right after the opening, maybe like the first person who dies next after the opening victims. Kill Tara, 
utilize it to give Chad and Sam something worthwhile to explore as the film progresses, make the animosity that they have against Ghostface so much more compelling and intriguing, make Ghostface this, this vicious entity that is just ruining their lives, obviously, like they always do in each of these sequels, <laughs> and just go from there. But you guys can let me know what you think about that as a usage potentially for Tara Carpenter down in the comment section below. Again, as of now, apparently the plan is for Jenna Ortega, Tara Carpenter, to have a limited presence in Scream 7. How limited and how significant or insignificant that could be, I don't know. But my hope is that it is still something that makes the character feel important. And obviously, I had, I've even touched on this in the past. If you were to kill her off, in a way, it would be like a full circle moment to the first time we met her in Screen 5. And I do think, honestly, it could be one of the biggest, if done well, one of the biggest and shocking opening kill sequences that you've had since Drew Barrymore. Now, granted, obviously, people who watch videos like this and people who follow the Internet happenings and get all into the nitty gritty of what potentially could or couldn't happen, you won't see it as shocking. I'm talking about most people in the general public, though, who aren't looking at my videos. They aren't looking at what's happening with Scream 7. They just know that Jenna Ortega exists. They know that Jenna Ortega is a big star and they like her work. So then when they sit down and watch Scream 7 and she dies in the opening, that's going to be a shocker to them. And it's going to send shockwaves over onto the Internet which would then draw even more people into the theater which would then only amplify the box office attraction of scream 7 when people come to see how jenna ortega dies in the opening sequence i would do it for shock value but not simply also just for shock value do it in a way that still makes the character of tara carpenter feel important pass off that significance to those that are left that cared about her and build upon it that makes scream 7 a very compelling film Show me how Tara's absence impacts characters like Sam, Chad, Mindy, even Christina if we finally meet this, this lady. But you guys, again, let me know what you think about this down in the comment section below. How would you use Jenna Ortega, Tara Carpenter, in a limited role if you were given the opportunity to fulfill such a requirement of Scream 7? What would you do? Would you have her kidnapped? Would you have her killed? Would you do something completely different that I'm not thinking of? Let me know down in the comment section below. If you haven't already, of course, make sure you go ahead and subscribe. Turn on post notifications so that you never miss a video. In the description, I will have links to all my social media accounts. I am on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there, of course. Let me know if there's any movies, news, or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future. And with all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.